Hi, how's it going? Good, thanks nice so much for coming. Hi. Great. So, uh, Jill, um, we met uh, last week uh, just to run through kind of the topics of the, the um, video and you, you were telling me, um, I was telling you kind of about my career and wh where I want to go and you were saying, no, no, forget about all that. Go and work in uh, McDonald's. <laughs> like, <w> why? <laughs> why should I work in McDonald's? Um, I just always see McDonald's as being one of the anchors of a place that runs off systems. And everything is regimented, you know, and it's things happen in there at the right time, every minute, the food is consistent all the time. Um, and like, for example, I was saying to you how the manager comes out every hour uh, on the hour to clean the windows outside and make sure that the entrance is clean. Like that's a huge goal that I would have here. I try and get them down once a day, but mm -hmm. that doesn't even happen. So I always wish that I had worked there and maybe I should just go there instead of telling other people because a business runs off systems mm. and by having good control over your systems everything works better you have like tighter staff margins because everyone is doing the job that they're supposed to be doing at the time they're supposed to be doing it your food margin is going to be better because the systems are in place that if you cut a beef tomato all the ends of it go mm. towards the soup or a pepper or whatever it is and then everyone knows that that that's what it is because they, it's in a system yeah. um, and i'm just of system obsessed wow. <laughs> And you, you have loads of systems here, which blew me away, which I've never seen. Like, yeah. t tell us a little bit about some of the systems you, you um, do here. So one of the systems we have is the customer service experience. So it's like this big. Mm. Um, and it starts before the customer enters the building. Um, and then it goes right through the whole experience. And it's basically a system for any staff member that comes here to work off. So it's, you know, how should the entrance look? to how you should seat and greet. Like there's an actual wording, like I don't like the word guys, I prefer ladies and gentlemen. Right, okay. So it's like, oh, hello ladies, are you looking for a table for three? Not hello guys, are you looking? Okay, yeah. So it, it's detail yeah. and it's like mannerisms and you know the vocabulary is very important and how you speak to people. So all of that is in a system. So they know this, if I just follow the system, I'll get the end result. And like keyed into it would be things about like, how to upsell and how like a customer can come in and have a sandwich for eight euros but then they could have a coffee for 250 a dessert for a fiver a bowl of chips for three euros yeah. so that's a system on how to sell so that's all part of it then from that we'd have details down into the customer profile of who the customer actually is in the kitchen they'll have a system of you know how they operate how they make all the sandwiches so they'd have like photos of the sandwiches open you know what filling goes into them that it's three fillets of chicken 15 tomatoes and i know mm. it to some people it's non-creative but the creative work has gone in and yeah. i've done that and this is what it is but then in order to keep that level of consistency you need to have the systems going on around it all the time and then everyone is able to work off it so it doesn't matter if you if no staff show up tomorrow and you take four people off the street the system yeah, is wow. there and then they follow through on the system um, so once the system is right, then the staff can perform better. They're less stressed because they know what they have to do and they have to tick it. So clean and rotas are another system. Data entry for you know how much money we take in a day, what our average spend is in a day, how many covers we took, so that we can look back on other years and see, okay, this time last year we took this much money, but our average spend has gone through the roof, which is a huge thing for the staff to know that they've been working harder to get um, the average spend up. So it, again, if there wasn't a system there recording it, then they wouldn't know how much they'd taken. Wow, that's that's really amazing. Like, I think that's uh, probably the way forward for restaurants. You know, traditional restaurants, they do have systems, but they just don't tell you the system. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they <laughs> probably don't even know the system themselves, and you have to go in, you have to learn it. And you go through a whole load of hardship just to learn that system. Yeah. Whereas you have, you've, you've created this kind of yeah. system. I think it's amazing. I think in a, in a bigger place, you have to have the system because mm. you know, there's so, the turnover is so fast. Um, in a smaller restaurant that's making you know, daily specials every day, it's totally different. Whereas when you're in a bigger place that's producing the same type of food all the time, the system is so important. And also, I just feel it definitely makes life easier when you're working in a place if you know what the system is. At this yeah. time, this happens, and at that time, this happens, so that you have a plan. 
like closing down plans in the evening, you know, this is the job that has to be done. So a new person, she'll be floating around, won't know what to do with herself. And then you hand her this, this is how you close up the restaurant. And then she can go, right, tick, 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 and yeah. get all the jobs done. It just makes it a lot easier. Wow. Uh, another thing you mentioned uh, that I've never heard before uh, was a life coach. And that you were saying that the life coach has, has been a huge benefit to your business. So yeah. Can you kind of explain to, to us the, yeah. the life coach? Um, <clears throat> so I suppose I've always had life coaches along the way. Some have been paid and some have been like, please help me, yeah. friends. Um, but I've definitely realized that in order to be on it all the time, which you have to be if you're self-employed, um, on so many different elements, you know, like, like that, you're one day you're in the kitchen, the next day you're making big decisions about marketing, then the accountant's ringing you about like big figures and stuff. So, and then you have your own personal life. So I think that's when I decided that the life coach business coach, whichever one you call them, mm. is a really important person to have because they help you keep on track and you can lose focus and you can get disheartened and you know people can say the wrong things or you can take things too personally and, and you also go through waves of creativity, which is a big thing in the hospitality industry. Like We have to be creative people and we have to see things yeah. in a different light. And in order to stay creative whilst doing all the boring stuff, it is difficult. So the life coach for me is almost like a teacher. So they're like, what have you done? And you know, don't be so hard on yourself. And here's a list of things that you could achieve in the next couple of weeks. And they just, they soften the blow of everything that's going on around you and yeah. keep you on track. Um, and then they're constantly pushing for the end, which is the end goal. What is your end goal? Why are you doing everything that you do? Mm -hmm. And unless you can really nail that, and that's when I spoke to you about um, having vision boards for me personally, for the business, to have the staff have a vision board if they want to do some extra training or personal things like there's a few here that have on their vision board to learn how to drive for a good while now nice. um, and then um, making that vision board come alive so if we have managers training meetings we'll pull them out and say you know what, what's happening on your vision board and yeah. this is the business one um, and they're all things that the life coach can help you with and especially if you're going through dark days you know and one of my coaches described it that I was on a boat going to a lighthouse and mm. then I and it's really rough and you're like every day it's like a new battle yeah. like this morning coming here and other mm. battles and then eventually you get to the lighthouse and you're like wow and then you have to like reward yourself and enjoy it and you know be grateful for it all because within a matter of minutes you're back out in the boat again wow. <laughs> and then you're like woo, here we go again and I remember when I got to the lighthouse at one stage I was like I'm here and he was like yeah, you won't be here for long so just have fun and often we forget to enjoy the big moments and there's been yeah. some like amazing moments that happened in my life and sometimes I go I wasn't present enough for them mm. and that's where now is one of my focuses because t the time will fly by and the you know we're open five years now in total and like you know things have changed so dramatically over yeah. those five years and I just wish I was more present for some of them yeah well um you would uh another thing which again I don't feel exists in, in many restaurants is you'd have kind of regular meetings and and uh, uh, sit down with your staff like yeah. what type of what type of stuff would you go through in, in these meetings um so the big one that we always take out is the customer service chart for the meetings okay. um so we have meetings early in the morning um like about seven o'clock they start in the buddha garden where we stand around in a circle everyone says what they're grateful for yeah. what their intentions are and it's a really interesting one because people aren't used to being sa asked what are you grateful for so they mm. say things like coffee and it's like then if you dig deep and we i'm just like i won't accept coffee come on come up with a better one and then um setting their intentions you know what are their goals or something and then we come back in the room and it's out with the customer service chart who are our customers um and then i explain to you how we have the customer profile so it's a real detailed you know we have um a a woman who c works in Brown Thomas and comes here every day and this is what she wants this is the experience she wants to have this is probably what she's going to eat how long she has for lunch what kind of spend she has and then we go through those so that the staff completely understand who their customers are yeah. especially um, with all the regular customers um, and then um, after that then we'd go through the actual business goals so like what what goals do we have for summer and explaining the menu in detail about who the suppliers are why we came up with these ideas um, who the manager is who i am different training stuff like that and then obviously coffee training is repetitive yeah. needs wow. to be done all yeah. the time <laughs> wow so like you have all these um systems in place and 
your vision board and these meetings, they all seem fantastic, but do they actually uh, benefit the business? Like, you know, scrap away at all, do, does the, the money <laughs> go up at the end of the day? <laughs> um, yeah, I, it does, because it means that everyone here is focused. And mm. if we were more drilled down into it and had it more religiously, the meetings every week or every month, we probably would see better results, but we get fall back and get laxy or we get busy like this weekend, being really busy, uh, suddenly what no one expected. Um, but like in 37 West, when I first opened it, I was very, very on the ball with them. And I had clear visions of where things were gonna go. I had blank checks written mm -hmm. and, and they all worked, believe me, they all worked. Wow. And I suppose it was just the laser light focus. So here the, the goal and now with 37 West and 56 Central is to make sure that we're we make these visions and we really focus on them and bring them up every time at a meeting. And then subconsciously as well, things do happen that you don't even realize it. Um, but definitely here, we made a new um, plan, I suppose, for the kitchen and we got the margin up by nearly 6%. Wow. And it's sustained it now over the last five months. So like if you have that drilled down and it's part of the, the management meeting, like this is what our goal is and we have to achieve it then I think if you have the right team and they're motivated and they're driven, mm. they'll make it happen. Well, um, <laughs> one thing that, that I, I read, uh, I think about a year or two years ago in the newspaper is that you were, um, you were taking homeless people to work in, in your businesses. Um, so the, we work with the Goey Simon community every right. year um, and we do a sleep out for Simon. Um, so once a year in October, we do a sleep out and Two years ago, we did it, myself and my father, and we raised a substantial amount of money, and then we went to a, um, a refuge house, and we redid it and made the kitchen brand spank and new, new equipment and everything. So then in between that year, I went to Food on the Edge and sat in the balcony and cried my eyes out listening to Massimo. Um, and I just said, like, what I'm doing is good, but it's not making enough impact. Um, and this is me just being hard on myself, because of course the kitchen was good impact, but I felt like, I could do more. So um, I just sat down with um, my head chef at the time, Vicky, and we just said, what can we do? So we came up with this concept, the positive placement program. So in Simon community, they have a youth reach house. So there's like lots of apartments where children who are highly vulnerable, 18 to 23 year olds um, can go and live in and um, they get more sheltered help basically, because it's when you're turned 18, you're on your own. And it's very difficult if you've had a hard life coming up. Yeah. So um, we connected with them and myself and Tristan, who I'm meeting today actually, to get another round of um, clients in. We brought two kids in and they worked in the kitchen with Vicky uh, for free. It's like a free placement um, every week. And then at the end of their placement, we hosted a big dinner party. And then that was to raise the money for the sleep out. And then also to show them that they have been like empowered in such mm -hmm. a way. Um, and then the result of it has been that both of them now have full-time jobs. They had started off just doing part-time work and now they both have full-time jobs, which is amazing to see that it actually, in one year, it completely worked. Wow, that's, yeah. that's really absolutely amazing. Yeah. That, like, that's just another thing I think that you've done that, um, that I haven't experienced in kitchens. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Jill. Welcome. I know you're, you have to head off to a meeting now. So uh, I let you off, but thanks so much for meeting me. I really, really Thank enjoyed you. it. Good stuff. Thanks. Perfect. And uh, that's a wrap. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>